Yeah, David Myler is with us. David, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, lads. How are we? What is going wrong with Liverpool? What is it? This is, this is not just the absence of a centre-back. What is going on? To be honest, sure, I don't know. Um, like, I watched the game yesterday. Yeah, they'll, they dominated possession, 67%, but they just don't look like scoring. They just they look a shell of themselves. Um, it's, it's just madness to be, you know, when you watch them and just to think this is the same team that you know, dominated the Premier League last season. The year before, lost obviously to Manchester City by a point, but they were still there in their boats. Um, it's just, it's remarkable. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to fathom. It's hard to put a you know finger on it. It just, it, it seems to me like that. The only thing I could probably come up with is there's something going on behind the scenes that somebody's not happy somewhere. Somewhere in the you know in the change room is not happy. Um, because they just, they, they aren't playing as a collective group as a team. They just too many individuals and you know obviously I know Jurgen made seven changes yesterday of course the freshen up they've got a big game on Wednesday against Leipzig but it's a risky game putting all your you know baskets one eight to win the Champions League thinking like you know it's just kind of give up I won't say they've given up on the top four but I think you, you, even against Fulham who are in I won't say fantastic form you know they, they've played good football but you know the results haven't been fantastic for them but you know they're They've got their tails up at the moment, and they are fighting for their lives. It was always they were always going to make it difficult for Liverpool. Um, and you know, if you if you saw Harrison Reed's interview after, he said he wanted it more. And of course, look, it's easy to say that when you kind of win the game, but it almost felt like that. You know, they were fighting for everything. They were throwing their bodies on the line. And even when Fulham were in possession of the ball, they looked good. Um, they waited for their opportunities to counter attack Liverpool. But something's not right somewhere. I don't know what it is. Um, before one of you asked, no, I've not asked anyone or anything. Um, Something's not right. The the decision not to pick or to, to mix the teams up for today and Tuesday, we're going to hear from um, Brian Kerr a little bit later on. He was making the point that it's 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 dangerous because it sends that message, you know, as you said, there to everybody that maybe this game matters a little bit less for whatever reason, it's particularly against a team. You know, it wasn't a mid-table team who were, who were safe and are already thinking about the summer. It was a team who were absolutely fighting for their lives and for, like, their livelihood. So... It was dangerous, but at the same time, if you're Klopp, like, realistically, the Champions League is it now for them this season. And the Champions League is so weird, and Liverpool's form has been so weird that, you know, they can draw and, and they can lose on Tuesday 1-0, or they can lose 2-1 or 3-2 or whatever and go through, and it's really good result because they're into the last eight of the Champions League, and they're a team who will have Fabinho back and their team will have Henderson back after the international break. And I don't know, like, you, you've, got to, you've got to try and, and pick, pick through the carcass of this season to rescue something. If I'm, if I'm Klopp, I'm thinking, OK, the league form is so bad. If we could just win five matches between now and the end of the season, we might win the Champions League. Maybe, but like, even as he said yesterday in his you know, post-match interview, he said, Forget about finishing top four or winning anything. He said, we need to win football games. You know, that's the big thing. Liverpool have lost six at home. And if you look at their wonderful record before that, where, you know, every team feared going to Anfield. Can you, can you imagine yesterday, if you're, you know, a Fulham player, even Scott Parker's manager, when the team sheets get announced, you know, it's usually, usually say two o'clock or whatever, like an hour before kickoff. I'm just going off at three o'clock kickoff. I know it was two yesterday, but, you know, They'd have gone in, they'd seen like, you know, the back four, Nico Williams, you know, Williams, uh, Phillips and whatever. And you're just thinking, we've got a chance here. You know, that's, that's the thing. And they'd, they'd have been, they'd have fancied themselves. Like, I know there's, there's been, look, it's well documented, a lot of injuries. But like to see kind of Mane on the bench, you know, Firmino's out. But if you had like, even when Mane come on, he brings that energy and that's why he's one of the best in the world in his position. That I don't think Jürgen can afford to rest anyone. I think you've got to play them and look it is tough the the demands are hard with the amount of games that they're having to play but Liverpool aren't in a position to be rotating um and of course look I know you used to choose the, the game is Wednesday against Leipzig isn't Sorry, it? Sorry yeah yeah uh, yeah but like what's to say like you know if Leipzig beat Liverpool then it's like well what then you know I know Liverpool have got you know the two goal lead or whatever but it's a, it's a risky game it really is um I imagine look I think everybody just kind of wants to get the season over and done with so you know the Liverpool players can probably take a break and 
you know, spend that time off. It's been frantic, but they've just, they've not, this, this since I think, what, the turn of November, December, they've just not been nowhere near good enough. Um, they don't look like scoring. You know, the players just seem to run out of ideas. It's it's kind of almost hate and hope stuff. Um, but at the same time, this team will be back. You know, they have a superb manager. They're all still incredible players. Um, I've no doubt they'll bounce back. It's just taking a lot longer than we expected. Will it be this team that bounces back, David? Do you, do you see changes either within the squad or from outside the squad this summer to ensure that they do get back? I do think they'll be fresh blood blood. And, um, I do think they'll look to sign a forward, um, whether that be someone who plays a wide on either wing or a striker. Um, I definitely think they'll look to, of course, look Genie Wijnaldum, who's probably been Liverpool's most consistent player this season. You know, his contract situation is still up in the air. Whether or not he'll go or stay, that's one thing. Um, but if he does go, then Liverpool are going to have to probably sign another midfielder. Um, of course, look, we've seen with Naby Keita, as much as he's a cracking little player, he does pick up far too many injuries and he can't get that consistent run. So they're going to need cover. Um, I imagine new faces come in. Whether or not, you know, they'll sell one of the big boys, of course, look, that Mohamed Salah one is always there, isn't it? There's the talks of Real Madrid want him or, you know, whether or not he wants to go, of course. I was on Saturday with the lads talking about his agent, you know, coming out. Is he trying to push for a move? You just don't know. It'd be, it'd be kind of one of those we'll have to watch this space. Um, because Liverpool do need fresh faces. They need something to kind of bolster the squad. If you look back a few years ago when they saw Coutinho bringing in Van Dijk, Alisson, that was the lift they needed. Maybe they're at that point now where they need another another new couple of faces just to freshen it up and, you know, actually get these boys back to the heights that we know they can hit. Have you any concerns about Klopp staying? No. I think, like, there's no... <sighs> My my pals always joke, like, would, would we get rid of him or whatever? And I said, no. I think the only fear any Liverpool fan would have is if Jürgen decides his time is up. Um, of course, that's his individual decision. Um, I don't get the impression that he's he's thinking that way. But, like, Liverpool fans would be desperate for Jürgen to stay. What he's, you know, accomplished over the last few seasons, he's delivered the trophy that no other Liverpool manager can deliver in Premier League history. Um, you know, that... I'm desperate for him to stay. He's, you know, one of the best managers in the world. Of course, you want him leading the team. Um, you just hope that Jorgen still feels the same. Let's move on and talk about Manchester United because um, we had certainly been critical of Solskjaer over the last couple of weeks for not rotating and particularly for second legs in Europa Leagues and you'd see Bruno out there and then they'd play a game against top six and it would finish nil all and Bruno would get... Uh, slaughtered for not being as creative as he could be or looking tired and it was like well it's kind of the manager's responsibility to not play all these players in all these games and then lo and behold the last five or six games where they've looked really rubbish or kind of average or mediocre or not very creative um, they've been rope doping us and rope doping Manchester City and they come out and they smack them in the mouth twice and you'd have to say deservedly win the game Oh 100% um, United were Oh, I think it was probably the near perfect performance from United yesterday. Um, everything went their way, but they fully deserved it. You know, across the back four from Luke Shaw, Wan Bissaka, the Maguire Lindelof defended really well, frustrated Manchester City, limited them to a lot of chances. Um, okay, you know, people will say Bruno got the penalty. Everyone's quick to jump on that. I think it's his eighth penalty of the season. Um, but still, from, you know, from 1 to 11, all of them. It just looked bang on it. Um, I'd said, you know, I imagine that James, Martial and Rashford, and then you look at Martial, I think I think yes, they summed up Martial, Martial's frustration with the United fans, was how superb he was in his hold of play, his link up play, you know, being strong, getting hold of the ball, holding off players, linking play well. It's just if United could get that on a consistent level, then he could be incredible. I think that's the frustrating thing. But, you know, Manchester City won a 21 win streak and then United just kind of went out with their, you know, mentality, their tactics and got it spot on. Um, I think Ali Gunnar Solskjaer deserves a lot of credit for the way that he set them up, the way they played, everything about it. Um, they limited Manchester City and, you know, as Pep said, like, after you have to give credit to United because they were brilliant. 
like a, it's it's almost more impressive what they did in the third quarter of the game where they had plenty of the ball even though they were in a really comfortable position David like that takes bravery I'd imagine to actually go there to press from the very start to actually have a bit of ball in the second half and realize that Manchester City would always be there to catch them on the break like is this really just a setup that is geared towards a possession-based team like Manchester City and just simply cannot work against some of the lesser teams in the Premier League no, I don't think it can work against, you know, the lesser teams. If you look at anyone, say, in the bottom six, seven, like you, you go back to kind of Crystal Palace, who will defend deep? The beauty of United's football has always been kind of quick counter-attack. And if you look back to, you know, the Rooney, Ronaldo, Tevez, those were some of the beautiful moments where they would defend that slight bit deep, but then when they could break, they broke, you know, they break a pass. And that was something Solskjaer, you know, referenced after the game, that they wanted to kind of go back to basics. And when you've got players like Rashford, James, Martial, who are all very quick, suited United and it's like the city okay you can have the ball but you're not going to go anywhere with it and they just frustrated the life in them and then as you said they did it wasn't a case of let's just sit in the edge of our box when United had the ball they were actually very good in possession they kept hold of it well um you know a couple of pundits referred it they played with a swagger they did like they, they frustrated city and when they had time to give the ball they knocked it around um no they were fully fully credited of their their performance they just I won't say they made City, like, they made an unbeatable team. I, I, I went into the game watching it thinking like, there's no way United can beat City. The form they're in, the way they're playing, everything is going for City. But United just put in a performance that, you know, it was long overdue for them probably against, you know, the other top six teams, obviously losing to Arsenal and Tottenham, but the rest of the games have been draws. They go out and put in a performance. It was interesting as well, Bruno talking about, if you look back at the other games, um, obviously, the one he referenced was Liverpool. Allison makes two key saves. Yesterday, when they got those chances, if you look at the Luke Shaw goal, like they took the chances. In other games, they've not taken those chances. Um, so sometimes you can kind of play well, not win, then you can play poorly and win. Um, but yesterday, they got it right and they played, you know, they were excellent um, and they deserved the win. Can we talk about Martial? Sorry, on just on that, because the, the, the frustration that you're talking about, Owen was making the point, he's kind of the embodiment of the Manchester United season, that uh, you know he'll be brilliant for ages, or no good for ages, and you actually, you're not quite sure which one you're going to get. What do you do as a coach to try and get a 25-year-old who you've invested so much time and effort and money at this stage into, how do you turn him into somebody who can do that week in, week out? It's a million dollar question, isn't it, sure? Um, there's no doubting the boy has bags of ability. Like, I still remember back his debut against Liverpool coming on, you know, turning to, I think it was Nathaniel Klein and skirtling inside out, and then he slots it past Mingile. Um, there's no doubting it. It's just, the only thing you could probably take of it is confidence with him. Um, you remember, was it post lockdown when he came back, he was scoring for fun, and obviously that dried up. Um, like, he's still. I like guess nine games now without a goal. Of course, Solskjaer be when the team are winning, he wouldn't be too concerned about it. But you want him to score. He had two opportunities yesterday. That one, of course, he goes one on one. Um, after McTominay's fold, the ball pops to him. You, you, you fancy him to score, and then there was another one that comes to the back post for the header, and he doesn't really make contact with it. But it's just a case of like Solskjaer's just got to kind of like keep stroking the ego. Like you could see. Like, there's never much emotion from Anthony Martial. You never really kind of see him upset or smile or angry or anything. But it was quite interesting that when he came off yesterday, you know, obviously Solskjaer greeted him and there was a smile and then he's going up the steps to sit down the bench and obviously all the backroom staff, the other subs, whatever, giving him their, you know, their approval and their praise. And, you know, there was a smile in him, um, which could be, which is only a good thing. You're hoping then that that confidence will build up in him and then he can kick on because... If Solskjaer can get him playing like that for the rest of the season, um, it would be huge to United. It, it almost seemed as if Martial had a much clearer role yesterday than he does most of the time. That it was like we we're going to counterattack quite a bit, and you're going to be the focal point of that. Is it just clear direction? Is it the clear, defined number nine role that Martial likes to be given? I don't think I, I don't think much would change. Um, whether you're playing you know, United's way of playing say, versus City as opposed to Sheffield United or even the midweek game against Palace. I don't think anything will change. I think they'll still want to play their style. Of course, look, you're going to have to slightly adapt because if you play against the Leicester side, you're going to have less of the ball as opposed to Man City. We're going to keep the, you know possession and keep moving the ball. So you're going to have to wait, be patient and wait for your times to counter-attack. You can just imagine, though, when you're playing against teams 
that do sit deep. The space is in between defence and midfield for Martial to try and get, you know, hold a little ball, get, you know, try and make something happen. Those gaps are going to be tighter. You can have midfielders steaming back. So it can be frustrating. It can be hard. Whereas City then, you know, will overload forward. You've seen yesterday several times, like even John Stones coming out, he's joining the attack, which then you look at, that's the centre half who's probably meant to be up against Martial that he then has more space to be able to get hold of the ball and isolate maybe a defender one-on-one where he, look, we know he's capable of beating players. So it just depends on certain circumstances will be able to suit him better. But I don't think, you know, United's mentality won't have changed going into that game. They probably, the only difference is we're not going to have as much possession as we would have against Crystal Palace midweek. Do we see a different sort of game? Do we see a different results if Fernandinho plays yesterday? It was quite interesting. Guardiola said, like, how do you stop Bruno Fernandes? And he said, by keeping possession. I think that's why he played Rodri over Fernandinho. Rodri's like, you know, the typical Spanish growing up in that era where they just dominate possession, they keep the ball and they keep it moving. I think he... It's very hard for me to criticise anything Guardiola does for the success he's had. But that kind of Fernandinho is that rough and rugged holding midfielder who gets in into people's faces and he frustrates the life out of him. Now, is it? do you say he got it wrong? Should he have played Fernandinho over Rodri? Maybe. But it's easy to say that when you lose. But certainly with Fernandinho, he's someone that gets in and around people. And you could imagine him kicking lumps out of, you know, Bruno or Martial or Rashford or one of those in the game. He's a different type of holding midfielder. Um, and I do think... You know, City are different when they when he doesn't play for them. Um, so, of course, look, when you're analysing it, if Fernandinho played, it's a different game then. But it's easy to say that, you know, City, again, are on a 21 winning streak. So why would you why would you overthink it going into the game? You'd expect your team to go out and, you know, perform and produce a result. Um, so it's a catch-22, really. It does seem at times that Manchester City can get caught like this. It tends to happen in the Champions League where they don't have a plan B because their plan A is so good. So what can they learn from yesterday, David, going into this closing stages of the season where they will want to add the Champions League to their trophy cabinet? I I don't think they'd have learned a lot. You know, the first goal, of course, is... you know. Jesus gives away the penalty after losing possession. The second one is the you know the counter attack. Obviously Henderson's distribution out to Shaw, Cancelo dives in. But even so, that's the way Manchester City play. I think the only thing Guardiola would say like is when we are behind, stay patient. You know, he he had said like I'm far more happier with the performance today, even though we got nothing than you know against West Ham, where we probably didn't deserve to win the game the way they played. So it is. I wouldn't say he's learned too much for him. I think it would be a gentle reminder for that squad that, you know, obviously we're on this brilliant streak, but we're not untouchable. Like, they're still they're still on to win four competitions. We're not to win all four of them. Um, obviously, the big ones, the Champions League that they want, you'd still expect them to win the domestic treble. Um, but it could be could be a blessing in disguise for City. You know, losing that, it'd be kind of like, okay, you know, refocus the minds. Um, we're not unbeatable. You know, teams can come and cause us problems like United did, um, which could be a massive thing for City going forward. It could be that just, just like, like I said, a gentle reminder to say, like, well, okay, we need to be bang at it every game here. And, you, you know, they're good. like Pep said, we want to now go and win the next game. So you wouldn't be surprised if they were to go and, you know, start another winning streak. Because they're still, they're still wonderful players and, you know, fresh off that streak, which is incredible. Can I ask about Gareth Bale? and the conversations that we've been having all summer, all season long, where it's like, wow, what a waste of money that was. Isn't it terrible? What a waste of uh, a career that the end of Gareth Bale's time is going to be. Real pity that he couldn't ever get back to the level of form and energy and actually the interest in, in football. And then all of a sudden in the last four weeks, it's like, wow, what's going on? Was it, was it just that he just needed to play some football? And, and is he, like, are we overreacting a little bit to the goals and the performances at the moment? Or is Gareth Bale getting pretty close to Gareth Bale. I don't think Gareth Bale will be the old Gareth Bale. I think he's, look, the amount of games he's played, you know, the injuries he's picked up, it's going to take its effect on him. But certainly it does look like a case of someone who's been playing regular football. He's really benefited from it. Um, that was probably the big thing that when he was playing, it was 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, you know, 60 minutes and all of them. Now he's in 
and he does look like a breath of fresh air for them. Um, the goals he's scoring, he's involved in everything. So certainly it's a massive plus. You know, if you had to look back to the, the game he played in the FA Cup, was kind of like the turning point. People were very critical of him against Marine, where he didn't put in any kind of performance. And you're thinking, these are, you know, semi-professional footballers. And then from then on, he's really kicked on. Um, and Mourinho's found that way. Maybe it was a case of just getting him minutes. But we know, look, we know Gareth Bale of 2021 is still far better than a lot of, you know, players in the Premier League. Yes, he's not going to be as exciting as he was, you know, in his last Spurs or the first few years in Madrid. But certainly there is still an exceptional player in there. Like, you know, it's that time of the year where Spurs are going to have to talk to Real Madrid about taking his contract for next season as well. He's under contract again at Real Madrid. So, that, you know, he could easily just go back to Madrid and play golf and not play for uh, for them. Or m maybe Zidane is gone and he can go back to whoever is going to be there. But, you know, five weeks ago, you would have said under no circumstances would any Premier League team be interested in having Gareth Bale. Is, mm -hmm. is that the little fear that teams might have, that Spurs might have, that they get Gareth Bale for the first half of the season rather than the second half of the season? Or could there be two or three seasons where Bale is a really top quality, if not superstar, but top quality Premier League player who's going to be scoring and creating goals at the level that he's at at the moment, which is, you know, a very high level. No, I... That is, look, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? What is going to happen with him after the season ends? Um, I just hope, for Gareth's sake, he doesn't kind of go back to Madrid and, you know, it becomes about money trying to leave or whether or not he stays. I think... The most important thing for footballers playing football, and now Gareth is playing, so surely he's going to, like, and when he wakes up this morning after yesterday's performance, he's going to think, you know, I, I this is what I love, that he'll want to continue it. Um, whether or not that will be at Spurs, who knows? Surely, no, like, he's earned enough money in his career. Um, it should be just but, about having crack. Yeah, well, I was going to say just about playing football. Um, I think he has the crack on the golf course. Well, that meant, yeah, uh, on, the, on the pitch, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it's got to be about playing football. Um, you know, he's... I think Gareth's the same age as me, so he's 31. Um, 32, 32. Just, 32 in July, I just checked it there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's the same age as me, he's 89. But, like, surely, you know, you know you're in your last few years. Um, like, he's got enough... He's earned enough money. Um, just go and play football, go and enjoy it, and... You know, look, we've all heard the sums of money he's been on at Real Madrid. So just go, and if, if Spurs want to keep you, I'd be pushing hard to put, you know, stay there. And of course, look, with the performance he's put in in the last few weeks, there certainly would be a number of clubs queuing up uh, to take him. Um, so I just hope that he continues to play, and then, you know, once the summer comes, if the Dan stays on, it's just to say, look, thanks for everything, I'm off, and just go and enjoy your last few years, because he's... He's an exciting footballer. Um, there's no doubt in it. You know, watch him over the years. Um, he's he's an incredible, talented player. So you just kind of hope that he does come out and leave Real Madrid and go play. Like all of a sudden, them having form and the form that they've had over the last couple of league games, they're they're back in the hunt for finishing fourth. They're two points behind Chelsea. I kind mm -hmm. of expect Chelsea to catch Leicester, to be honest, even though they're six points behind. So they're they're. You, you wouldn't put money on them, but you would say that if their form continues like this, and obviously Harry Kane is fit and playing well, like, you know, a, a stereotypical Harry Kane performance with beautiful goal, top corner, thanks very much, almost effortlessly, that um, you wouldn't be terribly surprised if Mourinho actually squeaked them into the Champions League next season. No, you wouldn't. Um, that's, that's, the, that's the scary thing, isn't it? You know, as, as much as Spurs haven't been fantastic and they've been kind of plowing along, like, now they're starting to pick up form and they're putting in, you know, they're scoring a lot of goals. Um, they look, you know, a lot more solid at the back that you wouldn't be surprised if they made top four. Um, Mourinho will know that, that that's that been his aim since the start of the season. So, a lot of it is timing with, like, you know, I spoke about Manchester City losing this game. That could be the little jolt or the, you know, the reset button for them to kick on, you know, to, to think we're not... You know, uh, Tottenham's results over the last few weeks could be their incentive now that, you know, they've got their tails up and they're playing well. But they could actually find themselves in the top four. Like, as you said, Leicester have had all sorts to deal with with their injuries. Um, and you kind of... Everyone has almost got that thing on their mind. It's not going to be again. They're not going to fall away again. But, like, Spurs are, like like you said, are coming after them. Chelsea are coming after them. Um, you know, there's just... 
it's going to be tough. But I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Spurs managed to get in there. One other point to note from Tottenham last night was Matt Doherty actually looking good, David. And uh, that's one slight note of encouragement on international month uh, like obviously at the weekend we saw the south american window go i see alan shearer this morning at athletic calling for the international window to be scrapped and to be honest with you it, it'd be kind of like getting out of an exam the night before if this international window will be called off if you get a pushback later into the year i presume stephen kenny would take it david but at the same time uh, matt doherty's former weekend is a little bit of a bright spark when they badly need it no 100 percent. look um, I spoke to JD and the boys Saturday about Matt in the sense that like he'd not been playing regularly, um, you know, and it was kind of like, how does Matt turn this around? You go and you play and you put in a performance like you do. Um, that's only good for him because we want, like, I want to see every Irish player playing as much as they can because boy, it ben- it's good for them and it benefits Irish football. So Matt obviously playing, hopefully he can stay in the team now and um, kick on and keep putting in performances because when they get, you know, when they come to play with Ireland, you want them... I think the best example I could use was if you looked at Liverpool yesterday for the lads who came in, you know, James Miller, Naby Keita, um, Nico Williams, Nat Phillips has played to a certain extent, but they looked, you know, lads who hadn't played regular se- like regular football, who haven't been playing week in, week out, you can see that they're they're not on it. There's, they're a touch off it. They're trying to get themselves up to speed. And that, that you know, you've got to reference that when it comes to international football. But if lads are getting called in by Stephen and they're not playing regular football, it is very difficult to turn up and be able to put in a performance over 90 minutes because you're not you're not up to match speed. A bit like Gareth Bale in the sense that was it a case of did he did he need games? He you now has gotten games and he's up to speed. So like seeing Matt yesterday obviously get in and play and do well, the more Irish players who are playing can only stand us in good state. And of course that's what like that's what Stephen wants because once they get called in, then you know they're match fit, they're match sharp which will only benefit us in the long run. Would we benefit from the international window being cancelled? Do you think it's a good idea? It's a tough one because obviously, you know, certain countries are obviously under, you know, there's different rules. Um, the last thing you want is like for international football to say like certain countries can't have players because clubs won't release them. And then you're thinking it's a bit of a hoorah. If it's cancelled, it's cancelled. Um, of course, I would love to see, you know, I'm excited to see how Stephen's going to, you know, face the challenge of Serbia and whatever, and how they're going to do in the World Cup. Um, something, you know, I'm interested in. So I wouldn't like it to be cancelled, but then I don't want teams to not have their full, you know, availability, and I don't want players being held back by clubs. So if that's going to be the case, then I think they should probably postpone it for a certain amount of time and push it back. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That that does make a lot of sense. We definitely don't want any outbreaks in the aftermath of people travelling away and bringing it back in. Uh, David, good stuff. Thanks a million. Cheers, guys.